Hi, my name is Harold, and I'm here to talk about a unique new tool called the Texas Twister. It's a variation of the chisel bits you can put on a pneumatic air wrench. So here's your typical bit, pushes, some variation, sometimes a little bit around the corner, but mostly straight, but its force is always forward. The unique thing about the Texas Twister is because of that twist, this tool known only for pushing now can be used for pulling. And with these various accessories, you can remove all kinds of things and take the place of a slide hammer. It'd be a lot safer and faster and a one-hand operation. We're going to show you how you use this puller bit to get an axle out. This is a typical passenger side, extra long, extra deep, hard to get at axle out of a Toyota. And we use a puller bit. You probably want your extension this time because you can be outside the car. We won't use it for this demonstration. Here's our CV joint hook, which is the most appropriate, although there are a couple other bits that you might want to use on a different style of joint if this wouldn't fit. Now the main beauty of this tool for an axle removal is you've got one hand free. Unlike the slide hammer, both hands are occupied. The axle comes out, as you guys know, pull them, axle falls to the floor, makes a mess, and then the oil starts running out. With this tool, I can use just one hand and then the other hand, I can hold the axle. Control the removal. Grab this thing before it hits the floor. Do a much safer, cleaner job. After the axle's out, often you want to replace the seal. And again, you can use a slide hammer. That sometimes is okay, but it makes a mess. And your both hands are occupied. Here we can use our smaller angled bit. We probably want the extension again if we we're in the car. We'll put this on. And we'll get this off in the edge and side the shorter axle and often just as difficult or more so because it's recessed so our foot won't even get in here in this one and this is often where even a pry bar is difficult we'll put our small our seal puller we'll leave it on here this is probably the best for this application and make sure I can get a pretty good grip couple of spots. But like any kind of pulling or chiseling, there are very many variations of air chisels. You want to make sure if you're doing axle work and heavy pulling, you have a heavy duty high power air chisel. And we can still get it out without making a huge mess having it fly across the floor. Right here we've got a pulley needs to be removed to do the timing belt or replace the front seal. This is in a typical four-cylinder engine, happens to be a Toyota product. Okay, hold on. And the best end for this would be this one. It's wide. We can get behind this fragile cast iron pulley and we don't have any way to use a regular puller, but even if we did, it often will break those lips off. There we got it. Didn't hit the floor like a slide hammer would have done. Didn't chip up the back. Didn't break any pulley. And we're off. Here we've got a distributor removal job on a 1952 Jeep. 
and the distributor is stuck. I could use my slide hammer, but I'd have that same problem with both hands being occupied, and I couldn't hold that expensive distributor as it plopped out and fell on the floor. So for this job, I use our Texas Twister main driver, and the end piece will be our blunt curved bit. That seems fit the best right under the distributor housing and I can hold it with one hand and power it with the other. And there we go. Here we, we've got a Chevy truck with a distributor and the later models have a speed sensor in that distributor hole. Very difficult to get at, way in the back blocked in by the firewall, intake manifold sometimes has to come off. But with this blunt bit and a little creativity, you can use a piece of chain, get around the distributor, and there's enough room and that gentle hammering of the air chisel has pulled those distributors up for us. And you can also get the speed sensors out. Here we've got our typical rear-wheel drive pinion seal job. This is a Ford product. We'll take the nut off. <clears throat> this is a pretty thick flange. We can get behind it with our blunt tool. On a lot of the Chevrolet GM products, this CV joint puller fits right behind it. And as you found often, the only way to get it off without this Texas twister is you beat on it with a hammer, which damages the bearing, or risks damage to the bearing. So this way we can have a controlled pull, no damage to the bearing. And put this blunt bit on it and Give it a try. We have the same dynamic as with all of these. Only one hand is needed, so I'll be able to hold that flange, keep it from flying across the shop. There we got it. Safe, controlled pull with no damage to the bearing. No part flying across the shop floor. Here's another application that's exclusive to the Texas Twister, and that's getting off these sheet metal pulleys. They're so light, there's really no puller that works. They just bend all the pieces. Here's an example of one. The puller was put on it, got it off, but it ruined the pulley. So with this, we'll take the nut off. Use our flat long piece. We can get under right at the inside of the pulley, not on the outside flange. There's this thing, and this was totally rusted on, and just that rapid force broke all that loose. get this off already. Completely rusted in place, came free easily, no damage to the pulley. Among all those uses and many more that can be done with the various attachments to the Texas Twister, this one also provides the ability to use some of the other tools you've got for your slide hammer or regular gear puller or even your body tools. With this you can put it through a hole and put a nut on it. So there's a bunch of body tools that style. You put a couple of washers and nuts and use your favorite gear puller. And here's an axle puller that can also be used. And like we saw 
with our Chevy speed sensors and distributors to get creative with the chain and the hook on the others. So thank you for watching. I'm sure you'll come up with lots of other ways you can use this thing. Just got to have one. If you want to purchase one, you can find it through any of your local tool distributors. Thanks. Okay, now I know you guys are thinking, look, we don't work on those stupid lawnmowers. Well, I know you don't, neither do I. But I do, because my best customers say, Harold, you've got to fix my mower. I just hit a stump and it won't start. Well, we all know what happened, right? The flywheel spun a little, busted the key. It's so common. But we don't want to do the job because this flywheel never comes off without breaking it. Or you use that handy-dandy Briggs & Stratton approved tool. You put it on here and you mash it down until it pops off. And then you bust the crankcase in the bottom and now the neighbor is really mad at you. You're trying to do them a favor. So, we got an answer. Texas Twister is an answer to how to get a flywheel off a stupid lawnmower. So we got to get the nut off first. We're going to pick our flatter angled bit. So we don't damage the flywheel. And this is a taper lock, just like steering parts. So we have this jolting action is the only way to get it off. But with this tool we can get it off safely without pounding on the crankcase. Look at that. And there you have it. The keyway is busted in half. Put in a new key. Engine will start. Neighbor will be happy. Flywheel is not damaged and we didn't have to pound down on it with a hammer.